yeah, privacy mod for network tight licenses. I'm gonna go through this video a bit fast. I apologize, but it has to be a very short video. I don't make this too long. The gist of what we're doing, the end result is running an application tied to a virtual network card, okay? And uh, this way, your local network connection is disabled while all this is going on. Uh, after the application closes, the, your network connection comes back on. Now, the reason why we must completely run your internet connection off, completely disabled, while the application is running is so the application can't call out to the internet. So the gist of this is the priority, the first thing you got to do is before you install the applications is install the virtual network card. Once we install the virtual network card, okay, you'll see it here. I'm using VertNet uh, network card adapter. That's the one I, it's the smallest one and doesn't use bury any resources. It's just a small little driver. The IP scheme is the most important thing that you can do in this whole setup. You cannot miss this step. I, I can't repeat it enough, okay? Um, right now, the, you can the, and check almost everything here, but the biggest important thing is the TCP IP4 stack here. The IP must be different than your local one that goes online, okay? The one that goes in between the router or the other router you have, whatever is set on your DHCP static IP on your local network. Now, all this works, okay? because we're getting the name of the local network connection, disabling it before we run the application. So this is my setup for it. And again, I'm going to repeat this one more time. Do not give this a default gateway or a DNS server IP. There cannot be anything here, period, in a story. Get that again. You cannot put a default gateway here. You don't want this thing to go anywhere. Just give it an IP and the subnet so that the application thinks, oh, it's a valid IP. I'm, I'm tying myself to it. So that's the critical part here. Once that's set up, here's what the batch does that we use. Disable local network, set daemons to service to start it, run application. After application exits, we stop the daemons, disable them, check task manager in case it's an extra step in case if you need it. I left it there as redundancy and turns on your local network and then you're back online. This is all happening in real time, you don't have to do anything, okay? So the steps to install the virtual, um, I shouldn't say the virtual card, the application. So let's say you have Maya and you have Nuke that comes in and you wanna install it. You must follow the procedure, disable your local network connection before you install that application. You want that application to be tied to the virtual network card, not that one, okay? So uh, one thing that here that uh, I'm going to discuss here is I already discussed no gateway, no DDS. The MAC address is very important, and I'm going to show you why. You have to give it a fake MAC address. So you take your real one from command prompt. All commands are available on Google. You know how to do that already. Once you get your MAC address, take off that the dashes in between, bring it here, and change it. Change the words. Change some of the numbers. Don't worry, the application will be happy with it. Okay. So once we do that. We can go ahead through the next steps. I'm going to show you the quickly the batch here, what it looks like. We're, again, again, I have 3D Max 8 in my 2013. Uh, let's just talk about uh, Max 8. Okay. Max 8 uses a different uh, daemon than Maya. This is the daemon that Max 8 uses. I'm going to come here and I'm going to show you. Right now, it's um, for manual. Okay. I'm going to disable it. And... This is how it is at the end when uh, Max closes. It should come back to disable. Nothing is running. So here's the call for uh, 3D Max 8 and what happens. Disable local network connection, start the daemons, uh, run Max, wait for Max to close, shut down the daemons, and then turn on your local network connection. The task kill is another one that you can add here. Uh, I did it as a redundancy in case if something is left hanging, you can kill it. Okay, that's what it looks like there. Okay, make sure you get that. All right, so we're gonna close that off and we're gonna look at here and here, the, both of these screens while we run these applications. We're gonna run max eight here and it says a license error has occurred. Well, that's because we're not running it from a batch. We're running it from the shortcut. We're not, we can't run it from the shortcut anymore, right? We run it from a batch and we make a shortcut to that batch so that we can minimize the batch while we run the uh, application. So let's run max eight. So we double click it. You see at the bottom here that the batch hit itself. It's down there, it's minimized already. 
oh, Max is running. Okay, now I'm going to minimize Max so you can see behind the scenes what's happening. You can see that the local network connection is disabled, as we called it. And in here, if we refresh, we can see that the Autodesk licensing service is on for Max 8. So now we close Max 8. Let's see what happens in real time here. Your network connection is going to come back on, as you can see here. Okay. And uh, the Autodesk licensing service, we don't re because Windows doesn't refresh it automatically, is disabled. And that's it. We're done. We're done with Max. What about Maya? What happens with Maya? Well, Maya uses a different service, a different daemon for the license. It uses FlexNet Licensing 64. Okay. So if we look at the Maya uh, batch, well, the only difference is where the location of the executable is and the service. Everything else is the same. There's no, nothing different about this. Okay, so let's go ahead and run Maya. Again, don't run it from the shortcut. Again, look at the bottom. You can see there, that's the batch minimized. And Maya is going to run. And you can see the output window is the first thing that comes up on Maya because Maya is a little bit ancient and that the output window always comes up for some reason. You, you probably disabled it in settings, but anyways. All right, so anyways, we work in Maya. Yeah, we did a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we closed it. And then we're going to see behind the scenes what happens. Local well, network connection is coming back on right here, identifying. Okay. And we look at the service here. FlexNet is also disabled, which is exactly what we want. And that's it. That's exactly what happens. So uh, one thing, last thing. With Maya 2010, I believe, it's starting with that one, um, Autodesk Toxic was included, which is an, a newer version of Combustion, which is a compositing program. Um, Autodesk Toxic and Match Mover cannot work unless the uh, FlexNet licensing service is running. Okay? And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to run this from the shortcut. It's obtaining the license, and it's going to fail. Generic license timeout because it can't get the license daemon to because it's not serving the license anymore. So set it to manual. I believe having it manual may work, but I always start it just to be safe. Okay. So you can make a smaller batch where it calls up uh, toxic just to turn on the service uh, to run and then disable right after. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this thing. And again, it's obtaining the license, and because the license is, <laughs> this, the daemon is running, it's serving the license to the programmer, okay? I, I really feel offended, uh, in my opinion, I'm just offended, that Autodesk would, in their right mind, would need a licensed Maya to install Autodesk Toxic. That's silly what they did. This is a free program that they gave out. And then they start including in Maya, but you have to license Maya in order for it to run. You cannot run without these servers, the server daemon, okay? It's very interesting. Uh, very, very interesting what they're doing. So I'm going to stop this here. Leave it on disabled. Okay, and that's it for now. That's it. Um, I'm going to pop the instructions back up again. And again, the reason why we do this, we want these applications and their licenses to be running completely offline. Now, let's say you have an application that doesn't have a daemon service, doesn't have a network license, but you still want to run it offline. You can still do that using this, this batch, any one of them, Max or Maya. All you need is to run the, this part, the first part, run the program, and then this part. So disable network, run program, and then enable network after it exits. You just take those parts, don't use these services. That's like if you want to run Photoshop offline, for example, you can do that. The only thing with you do this is you're killing your network connection, so the application can't access anything out. If that's what you want and you want to control these applications and how they get themselves tied to the licenses on your MAC addresses on your network cards, this is the only way of doing it. Um, firewalls, running proxies, forget that stuff. Just get on this and just stop these damn applications from connecting online and doing what you don't want, okay? And this is the way I do it. So, virt network card here. That's the one I use for the virtual network card. Okay, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope that people stay safe out there. And just to let you know, all these applications, the big ones, are always calling home. Maya, 
3D Max, uh, the Foundry programs, they're always calling home, especially Adobe. Adobe is a nightmare. They're always calling home. So with Adobe uh, Photoshop uh, Premiere, uh, uh, After Effects, always run it offline, okay? Do the best with just the offline mode. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and take care.